right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So someone once told me when I was a kid that there is a fine line between rage and laughter. And I feel like that's what I try to develop. I'd like to see the funny side of things. So today I'm going to tell you my whole life story, okay? And it's okay. It's going to be fun, I promise. So how many of you can remember when you were like, hmm, six or seven years old. Okay, about half. The rest of you need to go seek some help. Um, <laughs> but when I was six or seven, we had outside a swing set. How many had a swing set outside, anyone? Yeah, we had not the nice kind like kids have today, the nice wooden kind, but that metal pole kind. You know what I'm talking about? Do you know those are supposed to be mounted in the ground? But no one ever did, like your dad just went out there and kind of smushed it in the dirt a little bit. And so we had it out there. And when we were young, I had two older sisters that were allegedly babysitters. <laughs> and they always made us go outside. And so we were outside, me and my sister were on the swing. And we're like, wonder if we could flip this over. <laughs> so you ever swing, you know, and you feel the pole come up a little bit? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, we're going to see. So we get going as high as we could. The pole was, and we're like, man, it's just, it's close. It's too much slack in the chain. But over on the other end was a little metal bar, a little two-seater job. You remember those? So we got on there, and we're like, okay, here we go. We start swinging. Holes coming up. We're like, okay. It's not working quite good enough, so we stand in the seat. Now we're really getting it going. Okay, this is going to work. This is going to work. It's not quite there. Stand on the back of the seat. So now we're really going. We got it going. It's so high. When I'm going up this way, I'm looking at the sky. So we got it rocking. I'm up. I'm looking at the sky. I fell off. Now, when you're six or seven, you fall down. What is the natural inclination to get up? I sat up. Where was the swing? It was up there. So the swing was coming. It was too late. I sat up. The swing hit me right in the face. Now, let me tell you something. This was the 70s. Things like that were not made to not maim children. <laughs> back then. The bottom of its metal and screws and all kinds of stuff. It hit me in the face. I jump up. I put my t-shirt over my face. My sister gets off swing and says, oh my God, don't tell on me. <laughs> she didn't even do it. She's just used to getting in trouble. And so I put my t-shirt over my face. I could see blood dripping down. She ran in the house to find our sisters who were the babysitters. But it was the 70s. <sighs> <laughs> so I'm walking toward the porch. They come running outside to our back porch. I'm walking toward the back door. I got the shirt up. I see the blood dripping. They're like, oh, my God. Let me see it. I took my shirt down. They said, oh, my God, his eyeball's missing. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I don't have an eyeball. So now I'm really freaking out, and they're freaking out. Everyone's freaking out. I go in the kitchen. They run to the sink and get the dish rag and slap it on my face. It still smells like soup and Clorox. <laughs> and they lay me on the couch, and they're freaking out. Like, what are we going to do? I'm like, call a doctor? So they figured the best thing to do is call her mother, who works not far away. So she comes running in the house. She lifts up the dish rag. She's freaking out. She sees it with blood. She pulls up the dish rag. She says, oh, my God, his eyeball's missing. I'm like, oh, oh, my God. I don't have an eyeball. Now she's running around with the rest of them. I'm like, what are we going to do? I'm like, no one has even considered up to this point calling a doctor. And so they decide the best thing to do is call my grandfather, who lives up the street. Now, let me ask you this. 
do any of you have that relative that no matter how bad you're hurt, you don't need a doctor? Why'd they call him? He comes down. He lifts it up. And I'm like, he's like, oh, there ain't nothing wrong with you, boy. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't have an eye. <laughs> no one's even outside. Aren't you supposed to have, like, a glass of milk or something? Find it. Get my eyeball so we can go to the doctor. Well, the moral of this story is this. I did go to the doctor. You know why I tell people this story? A, because this is, how my, this is the childhood piece of this story. And to show you how crazy life can be sometimes. But I tell that story mostly when I'm going to do trainings or I'm speaking to an audience. Because you know what it does? It galvanizes everybody. Just like, look at all of you right now. Wrapped attention because you're like, which eyeball got knocked out? <laughs> right? You're trying to see it, but so do you want me to tell you? All right, so look, I'll tell you this the end of the childhood portion, but it was this eye, and not because I know you're all like, man, I swear I see both his eyeballs moving up there. <laughs> But it, it was there, and they just couldn't see it because they had blood in my eye. I know that's gross. But it swing hit right here, took a chunk out of my eyebrow, split my eyelid. So, but let me tell you that it worked out good for me because I was like in first grade, and nobody messed with the kid with stitches clear through his eye. <laughs> I couldn't even open it. So it was a good time for me the rest of the school year that year. So that is the end of the childhood story, and I'm going to hit you all up later with another piece, okay? <laughs>